to my channel. So today's video, I am really, we're going to use the word excited about, <laughs> um, I think this set is really fun. Um, just a disclaimer, you're going to hear me make some complaints about myself in regards to this set and things I would change and just let me have my time and my moment to, you know, tell myself how to improve. <laughs> So, um, there's a mistake, which I will tell you, um, which I will show you. And so you won't do that. <laughs> you won't fall victim. Like I did. I fell victim to myself, but these are some bead nails and I wanted to do these for a while. And I definitely think I want to try them out again. I have been planning to do these for a while and I had a little sample nail and my client was like, let's do this. And I wasn't like prepared, like fully with the design. Anyways, we're here. We're showing you what went right and what went wrong. So this is my client's previous set after about, ooh, I think four weeks. This is when it was fresh. And it still looked pretty good. She was missing one of the large stone on her right ring finger. Um, but I think it came off like later in the process. She, they, she, she enjoyed them. So I removed this on a live. So if you haven't seen that live, um, go ahead and check it out. Um, and I got all the way up to the design. So if you watch that live, this is the design portion. If you haven't watched that live and you got hours to spare for whatever reason, go ahead and watch that. So these are the Madam Glam colors we're getting into today. And, um, for the yellows, I think it's called Honey, Oh Honey or something and Fries Before Guys. I used two different shades of yellow, then these gold shades and one of them is Bee's Knees. So I love the fact that one of them was in reference to Honey and one of them was the Bee's Knees. The Bee's Knees isn't this gold um over this gold I put the bees knees and I'm not sure I show myself polishing with that um but I did that because just because of the tone I wanted underneath and the bees knees is a reflective holographic glitter so it has that cool reflective effect when the flash is on it so next I'm using that honey color I think it's called we're just gonna call it the honey color and just rewind a little bit and you'll see that I showed you <laughs> so I'm um, drawing a French and I am winging this I'm winging it and I'm kind of trying to remember because there's like I said there's certain things I do with like an intention like a plan I'm like I wanted to make some bee nails especially when I got all the charms from Daily Charm of course shout out to Daily Charm with the beautiful little gold charms you'll see them better later in the video so stay tuned for that so I'm just drawing this French on and I believe I'm using the um the art liner brush from Daily Charm as well along with the actual Madame Glam brush just to fill in um and so I'm just going ahead and polishing this on and then what I'm gonna do is dry brush over it with that fries before guys color which is that a little more like darker mustardy dijon -y kind of yellow -y. just like dry that off and just brush it over and um i'm establishing what i think is i don't know i did a full nail on each hand black and i kind of regret that or kind of wish i would have like did the black on one whole hand or something like that you'll see the black with the gold um honeycomb design is really cute especially matte with the gold charms but the way I mixed it in, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but anyways, so I'm just polishing this on, and Madame Glam makes, um, good yellows, but I just want to tell you, yellows in general are hard to make, so it's not as good of a formula as a lot of their other colors, but like I said, there's, pigments can be made out of a lot of different things, you know, it doesn't, yellow is just not just yellow, does does it come from the earth as yellow <laughs> you know it can either be chemical de derived or just found in nature so different things can react different ways yellow gets weird and sometimes purples do um yeah so just taking that just letting you know about that um and you may need two or three layers whatever in this situation um, like i said i went ahead and dry brushed this color as you see me doing right now just to add a little bit of dimension because I had like I said I had some practice nails over here that I've done just sitting down in my office so I knew I liked the um gold honeycomb over the yellow we're doing stamping today guys 
Um, just so you know. So after I go ahead and get these cured, we're going to move into stamping. That's basically what I'm establishing. I knew I wanted to do a bling pinky. I kind of wish I did that a little different as well. Um, so I did my bling pinky. That gold you see in the background right now is for that bling pinky. And um, the rest I knew I was going to do those charms and stamping. So after I get the, um, I think I double coated with the honey color and then I went in with the dry brush that fries before guys color. And um, as we move through polishing and go to stamping, I just wanted to tell you um, in the video, I'm gonna be using Maniology stamping items and they have a lot of info um, regarding like helping you learn stamping because it's a whole little subset of nail culture within itself and it's something that I used to do more often earlier in my nail career um which I really appreciate it and people don't like rate I don't know how to say that without sounding offensive but a lot of the nowadays <laughs> nail artists don't kind of impart stamping a lot that I see um and I think you can do a lot of cool stuff with it I mean it's something that I don't think you want to be exclusive in your arsenal, but it's definitely good to have just like water decals or stickers or hand drawing. It's just, you know, a tool to have to be able to use because some things I think look better stamped. So I'm cleansing the plate, cleansing the little scrapers, and this is not super in depth on stamping, but they have starter kits and I love this. This is so cool. If you're familiar with stamping, you need to like roll off your image when you're done with it, the excess, and make sure your stamper's clean. This is what looked clean, but you see the little lint came off. So it's just a little sticky thing, and then it has a regular sheet of paper you can practice your stamping on. It's really cool. So I have a discount code for Maniology, and it's discount code Tabitha. And I did some techniques in here that is not on their instruction list i emailed them afterward and i had a little bit of difficulty but we we got through it and they gave some tips which i'm going to share with you but like i said they have plenty of instructions and videos and they'll help you out if you're having any trouble but once you get stamping down it opens up a world of like quickness so my main issue honestly in this situation is me not rolling my stamper when i pick up the image i kind of put it straight down and i should kind of try rolling the next thing is that her nail is too long for this stamp. It's not a problem. That's why I'm showing you like in certain patterns, you can continue an image. So you have to be strategic about it. I knew that I could finish adding onto this bumblebee design, even on long nails. So um, I just went ahead and picked up the image twice and then continued, you know, where it ended. So I just want to show you when you have extra on your stamp, you see I got picked up that previous design. You can go in and take a sticky, that sticky paper or something to lift it off. So this is our image and you see me pressing, I get it all lined up because I wanna make sure we have the cuticle area. Um, you can put one of those barriers around the finger like those latex barriers, you just gotta make sure you and your client aren't allergic to latex. So with this honeycomb design, I did the same thing. I'm kind of lining it up. I did that first one and then I realized I need to knock this straight line off. You see me uh, get that one little top piece off and I figured it would look better when I tried to line it up. So I'm just carefully, and that's why it's great to have a clear stamper. I'm lining up to the best degree possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and press down. Um, I try not to roll it because sometimes it can distort the image. It depends on the curve in the nail. There's Stamping is fun. There's a lot of trial and error, but once you get it down, it's fun. So you see when I go to pick up these images that I'm just plumping that's a that's a technical term i'm plumping it straight down and sometimes that's giving me a little less of an image but i'm just going through doing the same processes in between every time you apply the polish you have to clean it off with acetone and these are stamping polishes if i haven't told you already and i'll put a link to the starter kit down below as well and just some different items i used in this video and um if you're interested put in the comments if you like a more in-depth video on like stamping in general yeah <laughs> so this finger was a little bit more of a challenge um it was too wide and too long 
So this design is also very forgiving, this honeycomb design, just because there's just inconsistencies in regular honeycombs found in nature, nature you know? So I'm just kind of piecemealing the situation together. I'm just like restamping and kind of lining it up and restamping and lining it up. And um, all the, the stamping polishes, I didn't show them in the video. Um, they came from Maniology as well. I love this little bee, right? See, I should have just left it a little more simple. Anyways, I'm showing y'all my little silicone mat that I've been using in the last like year behind my videos. It cleans beautifully with acetone and a little paper towel. Eventually it comes clean. So these crystals I kind of regret using. I think they're crystal golden shadow. No, no, what are they? It's moon sunshine. <laughs> Somebody put it. I told myself I was gonna remember. I kind of regretted those anyways. So now I'm adding my charms and these are from Daily Charm. Look how cute this honey charm is and this honeycomb. It has a little bling in it. You see the O in honey is a little bling. Then we got this little gold B and I'm applying these with resin or nail glue. Um, it's a whole nother subject as well, but these I'm applying with resin and that's how I like to apply my nail charms first and foremost to get them set where they need to go. We're having a, a chemical adhesion situation going on. And um, then after that, I'm going to seal around it with a crystal gel. And I'm going to use in the Daily Charm Stay Put Jelly to seal around these to make sure they're locked in place. And um, just so you know, Madam Glam gel polishes don't really have a tacky layer inhibition layer. So I didn't wipe these off before doing all the stamping and things like that, just so you know. And this is probably my one of my most favorite nails. It's like simple with that honeycomb design, that charm over that honeycomb design with the gold and the little bee. I like that. This one kind of seems a little like, I don't know how you say it. Like, I think it's the tone of yellow. I think if I would have did it another tone of yellow, like a more golden -y tone, that it probably would would have looked better. It kind of looks more cartoony with that shade of yellow. I um I love the stamp and I love the thought of it. Um I just think the yellow kind of throws it a little bit. So for this bling pinky, uh, let's talk about regrets here. Let's talk about regrets and loves. I love the thought of the golden bling pinky. Um the black crystals I wish I would have left out and the um crystal it, I think it's metallic sunshine. I went and Googled it. I took a break and Googled it. So, you know. It's not the worst thing. It's the one that kind of looks a little brown and gold. It's a cute crystal, but I think the brown kind of like brings it down because it doesn't really, I felt like forced to put it on the other hand in her pointer finger, which I think becomes really busy. But it seemed kind of weird that it was there with that brown tone in it. I don't know. So I wish I would have left this just more golden that I would have done just like a crystal golden shadow and orum. I popped my finger while I was talking. <laughs> and um, I wish I would have done those two and added like the gold micro beads to it. So it'll look like a really just blinky gold stiletto nail. So that's how I, that's what I wish I would have done different. So just so you know, I'm applying these crystals with resin, um, and I like to do stilettos from tip up just to ensure that my tip looks good. I explained it in a previous video. I just feel like it's easier to work stiletto full bling tip up. But you do whatever you do that makes you happy. That's just for me what happens. <laughs> and as you can see, if this is your first time to the bling situation, that I don't go literally edge to edge because I'm trying to make sure my stiletto shape is beautiful and the crystals once they're on that side the top of them are like facing to the literal left and right side of the nail so it can protrude out so my suggestion one is to use smaller crystals towards the edge of the nail because the smaller crystals aren't as tall as the larger crystals they literally stand taller from like the ground <laughs> um, if that makes sense so if you're going to do a mix of sizes and crystals, I recommend bigger towards the center. Um, of course, it's art. Do you um, for just shape sake and longevity of crystal wear? That's what I recommend. And also, um, while we're here, I'm just blinging. I want to talk to you about something I never touched on, like showed clips of later in the video is me cleaning up 
the um, stamping polish from her skin. I just top coated first. I made sure it wasn't like stuck because sometimes the design can literally be stuck to itself like it stamped as one full image you know what I mean so you can take a little fine like brush a little edge brush or something like that dipped in acetone to kind of break that seal but make sure your brush isn't dripping with acetone like basically wipe most of it off because it can get to onto your actual nail design but if you can refrain from it or just like physically separate it like pull the skin back a little bit like the um epinicium around the cuticle area if you can just push that back and separate it i would top coat first that way your stamping design is like locked in and then when you go in to clean up with acetone you won't take off the design so that's my suggestion as far as like a order of operations thing as far as doing the cleaning of the stamping polish um i would definitely recommend for like black stamping uh probably a protectant around the finger just because that black can kind of stain inside the the sidewalls and around the cuticle area you kind of get stuck in there so yeah be better than me so this nail um i feel like it needed something and i should have just left it plain honestly and I put these crystals on here and um, I didn't top coat before. I did not top coat before I did this just to kind of keep from having adding extra layers. And so I, it was kind of a no turning back situation. I, I don't hate it, but I do. So this I had a great idea, just didn't turn out. Well, I feel like I had a great idea. I wanted to bling the black stripes, as you can see. I'm using the graphite crystals from Swarovski. Um, I'm sure... Um, is it Blue Street? What are they called? Serenity Crystals has a comparable one, quite possibly. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I'm using the resin. I'm just going on the black stones. I'm trying to be considerate of the size as I get to this tip. I'm using smaller crystals. The thing is, um, because the shape is so <laughs> clean, the, this, when you see them in pictures, like this oh, this pointer, the point of the stiletto is what I'm trying to say. The point of the stiletto looks a little janky because of the crystals and I didn't have anything smaller than the, I think the fives that I had and I either could have left it blank or put the two little fives that I had or one little five that I had on the end and then there's this little peak of yellow that remains because this wasn't my full intention when I stamped this because remember when I told you I did not have a full plan <laughs> so I wish I could have positioned the stamp a little different just because that little little splicket of yellow that's on the very tip kind of distorts the look, the sharpness of the pinky nail to me, it's my opinion. Anyways, I told you I put a disclaimer. Don't like roll your eyes at the bottom and be like, you're just complaining about yourself. I told you I was going to. Okay. <laughs> so um, after I get these all my little stones applied, um i still around them and i don't show it in the video i still around them with like the daily charm seal it pen or you can use like your favorite no wipe top coat and a little fine like liner brush to seal around your crystals um especially if you're about to do matte which i was gonna do, do not seal around or seal your crystals in with matte top coat don't do that if you're gonna do matte top coat seal around with a regular shiny no wipe top coat first and then cure that and apply your matte top coat around the stones like literally a perimeter like if you traced around them don't seal them in with it if you're having confusion about what that means shameless plug i'm doing one-on-one -on -one classes here i'm in the dfw area in texas the dallas fort worth area if you're interested i smacked and i should not have done that and i should take it out the video but i'm not i'm committed um, email me at top of the scott dot classes at gmail.com i'm booking one-on-one -on -one in person about gel gel related poly gel things here um yeah email me and so you can get info pricing info and etc i do require a deposit just so you know so you're mentally prepared that that exists <laughs> anyways back to the video so i'm taking that um crystal gel from daily charm use discount code tab at the 10 of course and i'm applying it really far up around the crystal i really want to seal it in and i want to kind of smooth out the transition from her actual nail the black and you know the honeycomb part into the actual crystal the gold part you know what i mean so we don't want this sharp like 90 degree edge where the nail and the crystal meets we want to make a little like ramp 
So the most important part about this past literally doing it is to blend it out. You see, I'm using that separate brush and I'm blending it out. I still want to leave that rent, but I'm feathering the edges. So there isn't this sharp line of demarcation where you can tell where that gel is. And that is the mistake you will see a little bit in the video. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I felt kind of and I shouldn't have done it. I don't know. Um, with that crystal moonlight color, just because it had that little brown tone, I felt like I should add it to this hand in a couple places at least. So it just equaled me adding this little bling situation where this bee was and this little partial honeycomb situation, which is something I stamped different earlier in the video and I ended up not liking. And I switched it to this off camera, you know. If you caught that little plot hole in the situation, go on, let me know. <laughs> but um, so I'm just applying my little gold beads, which I also felt I should have added to the bling nail over there, right? You see what I'm saying? Anyways, so I'm just taking a little bit of that stay put gel and I'm using the back of my um, pickup tool, my crystal pickup tool. And that is again from Daily Charm. And um, then I'm just repeating that same little process and I'm taking that crystal gel and I'm sickling all around these charms. I don't want to be able to get like hair and things like that stuck underneath them. Now they're going to have texture on the surface and how irritating that is. It just depends on the charm. Some of them have, you know, more protruding pieces. Some of them are flat, like the honeycomb one is flat, but it also literally has holes in it. So things potentially could get stuck, but I don't think I made a decision that those didn't need to be filled in. I did put top coat in there just a little bit, but not all the way to the tippy top of it. So, yeah. Um, and so with this more 3D B, which I had two of these Bs, but I guess I dropped one. I couldn't find it and I was sad. And I think this is the cuter of the Bs. Yeah. So I'm taking a good glob of that gel and then around that stone you see i'm just feathering the edge because we want to leave the height in there we want to leave that build up of the gel we just don't want it to be as obvious and um yeah this is my big mistake so i was like i'm trying to be i don't know what i'm trying to do um just get it done <laughs> so i put the gel around both of these right like i'm gonna go ahead and apply it to both spread them out Yep, and that was my mistake. So you see I'm feathering it out on this nail. And this nail I also added like a couple crystals. This one isn't so bad, the design here. I just, just feels different. It's just that yellow that I chose. And that one I just wanna I went ahead and put it in the light. And then I didn't blend this out. So there's just this ugly <laughs> lump of gel around it. So I'm just filing it down and then being careful because at this point, I'm a little bit committed to the design and stuff like that. So I'm trying to file it down as much as possible without messing up the design behind it. And um, realize if I can get it kind of flush enough, um, it can the top coat can kind of blend it in. You can tell, okay? You can tell. <laughs> My client was discounted for her price of these nails. <laughs> um, so once I kind of smoothed it out, I added a no wipe top coat around it. And then I'm going in with my matte top coat after that's cleared. And you can you can tell what ha that something went awry here. So don't do that, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> but like I said, I off camera, as I mentioned earlier, sealed around the stones with a no wipe top coat. And the top coat that I use, don't roll your eyes, but it's just the actual fact. I use the diamond shine top coat from Daily Charm as well. So, um, or and that in combination with the seal it up pen. I use both of them, but like I said, you don't need that pen. It's not a must. I like it for convenience sake. It does add a convenience in certain situations, but you could be a successful nail tech and apply crystals successfully on yourself or others just fine without it. So um, applying matte top coat with crystals and stuff is a very tedious thing. And if you're a nail tech or somebody who's going to get in the nail field soon, I recommend that you charge extra for it. Not by itself, because you apply it just like a regular top coat if you're going to do it with stones or charms.
just because it makes it a very tedious thing. But people who charge like just for matte top coat, like a solid blue nail, just matte, I don't get that. Well, that's me and my opinion, you know? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> anyway, so you see, this is taking forever for me to just go around this nail, and this is sped up two times. <laughs> so I'm very trying to be very strategic. Um, the thing is, you don't want to miss a spot because you don't want to miss a spot. <laughs> you want to make sure everything that needs to be matte is matte and everything that doesn't need to be matte isn't matte. And I need you to be as efficient at that as possible. So it's just taking your time and checking that light and seeing where that matte top coat is and isn't sealing around those, not sealing, polishing around the perimeter of those stones and charms. Don't seal the edge of the crystal, the lip of the crystal in because it'll make that um, crystal a little bit frosty. And it happens. It happens. Um, but you want to limit it as much as possible. Try to keep from doing that. So like I said, this is sped up in two times. And I'm not sure if I cut any clips of it out or not. But you see, I'm making <laughs> very sure that I hit every spot. And um, the reason is one, double matte top coating can make it look not as good for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it doesn't look as good in my experience with the matte top coats that I've experienced. Also, you can't really patch it. You're like, oh, I'm just, I just missed this one part and it's shiny and I'm just going to put a little line over it and patch it and it's going to blend in. And it's not. <laughs> It's going to stand out and be obvious unless it's like under something that you can't really tell. I don't even know. But yeah, it's not. Make sure you get all the way to them edges. You see? And make sure I'm trying to get out any lint that I may see. I'm just super making sure. And I know it seems excessive. Um, but I just hate to ever come across it. <laughs> so this is the final look, you guys. Like I said, I have um, some regrets. It's mostly that pointer finger, her left one, the one that's on top, that B one. Um, I wish I would have left the extra crystals off. It kind of makes it look a little cheesy. And then I wish I didn't mess up that honey crystal thing around her ring finger. Past that, I think everything else is I can kind of live with. Um, yeah, it becomes extra. But I really thank you for watching and hearing me complain for like 30 minutes. Um, Go ahead and let's leave a bee little or a honey emoji down below. I'm giving you good content so you can help me. You, you can hear me talk bad about myself for free. Um, And I have some exciting thing com things coming up, you guys. I've been trying to do lives a little bit more here and there. So make sure you have your notifications turned on and turned on your phone. Go to your settings and allow YouTube to give you notifications. Some of y'all, that's y'all's problem. Make sure you're doing that. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And um, yeah, just be ready for some nail content. And um, check out maniology.com and their stamping. Um, and tell me, like I said, down below, if you want to have like a video like dedicated for like stamping or something like that, let me know. Check them out. Discount code Tabitha. Um, they have a lot of different plates to choose from. So, um, yeah, go and fall down the stamping rabbit hole and let's go guys. Even though this set wasn't, um, perfect, like aesthetically for what I wanted. Um, I definitely enjoyed being able to stamp these honeycomb designs and these bee designs. I really think that, yeah, I, I just love how this set looks with that. And then also these little golden charms, I think really make it. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate y'all. Bye.